everybody, and welcome to another episode of Echo Live. Welcome to our extreme pumpkin carving episode here from the Michigan Science Center. As always, my name is Anna, coming to you from My Size Echo Distance Learning Program. I'm so excited to see so many people starting to join in here on Facebook, on YouTube, and even here in Zoom. If you haven't done so already, go ahead, introduce yourself in that chat feature. Tell us who you are, where you're watching from, and maybe tell us what do you think we might be using these pumpkins for today? Um, hi to Owen, hi to Katie that are just starting to turn in, uh, tune in now. Um, so use that chat feature. You can use it throughout the entire program today to ask questions, to answer questions, um, and to interact with us here at the Michigan Science Center. Now, fall is my favorite time of the year. I chose a pretty fitting background for about this time of year. I wore my fall flannel today, um, but fall is really my favorite time of year because here at the Michigan Science Center, fall means it's time to do some extreme pumpkin carving. Now, you might notice these pumpkins are already carved, um, but the version of carving that we've already done before the show is by no means extreme. Definitely carving pumpkins is a great time. Definitely one of my favorite fall traditions, but instead of using a knife or some tools to carve faces or fish shapes or other fun fall things into our pumpkins, we are going to use chemistry because that's what we love here at the Michigan Science Center. Um, so my various pumpkins are all set up for their own chemical or physical reaction. A quick review, we've talked about chemical and physical changes as they relate to chemistry here on Echo Live in the past. Um, when we are using a physical change, what we might be doing is changing the shape or the amount or the arrangement of a substance, but we're not creating anything new. For example, if I were to tear a piece of paper in half or crumple it into the ball, at the beginning and at the end of that reaction or that change, what we have is still paper. It might look different, it might feel different, it might smell different, you never know, but that is a physical change where at the start and the stop of our reaction, we are working with the same set of atoms and molecules. On the other hand, in a chemical reaction, we are making and breaking chemical bonds on a molecular level. We are ripping apart molecules, putting them back together, and at the end of our reactions, we have something entirely different than what we started with. So we've got a variety of chemical and physical changes here throughout the show, um, and we'll treat this like a pop quiz episode because a lot of these are reactions we've seen before, perhaps not in a pumpkin, but I'd like for you to tell me after we go through each of our reactions here, or each of our changes, I want you to tell me whether or not you, or whether you think the change or the reaction that you saw was chemical, where we're creating something new, or physical, where it might just look or feel a little bit different than how we started. We are going to start way over here on this end of the table. We've got our first pumpkin volunteer um, right over here. Now, this one, we are going to work with a pretty familiar substance that we use quite often here on Echo Live. Into this pumpkin, we are going to add some dry ice. Now, if you remember dry ice, you know that um, to work with dry ice, we need some special safety equipment. Like always, I've got my cryogenic gloves here, here to protect my hands from this dry ice, which is super, super, super duper cold. And when I say super duper, we should probably put a number on that. Um, but the temperature of this dry ice, um, these ice cubes that you see right here in my hand, this dry ice is negative 109 degrees Fahrenheit. It has to be. Um, it has to be in order for this dry ice to be ice, to be a solid, which is one of our states of matter. Um, now, does anyone remember, um, based on either your past knowledge or a past episode of Echo Live, what is dry ice made out of? Um, it's not made of water. Typically, we think of water ice or H2O as being ice. Um, but in order for water to turn to ice, it only has to be 32 degrees Fahrenheit, um, which is much, much warmer than this type of ice that I have here on top of my glove. Um, Elena said, this is cool and quite literally, quite literally, this stuff is super cool. Um, one might even say freezing. So this stuff is not made out of water, but it is made out of something that we experience all the time in our atmosphere. This substance at room temperature exists as a gas. Um, if you wave your arms around, you can feel it, but we can't see it because it's invisible and we can't smell it because it's odorless. Um, if we want to be able to visualize it or turn it into a solid, it has to be very, very cold. This stuff is frozen 
carbon dioxide. Ooh, ah. Um, so if you go ahead and you take a deep breath in and out, the gas that we exhale as waste from the human body is carbon dioxide gas. We take in oxygen, exhale carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is all around it, us. We experience it all the time. Um, but what we're going to do is we are going to take um, a glass of water, um, some pretty warm water that I've been heating um, just for a couple minutes before our show started. Um, we're going to put our beaker full of water, warm water, right down there inside our pumpkin, get my lid ready to go back on. Um, let's drop in our dry ice. Maybe I'll grab a couple more. And let's drop that in and watch what happens. Gives us a very spooky reaction starting to take place in our first pumpkin volunteer. Now we said that water is very, very warm, right? And as soon as that warm water touches our frozen carbon dioxide, it begins to sublimate. Um, sublimation means that this dry ice is turning from a solid immediately into a gas, skipping that liquid phase altogether. And the cool thing about this reaction is that um, when we put this in there, right, that dry ice starts to sublimate much more quickly. Um, so let's see, I have a question in the chat, but let me read this question. Um, but I have a question for you in return before I answer this question. Are dry ice sublimating here inside the pumpkin? Is this an example of a chemical change or a physical change? Are we making something new? or are we keeping the same molecules? Tell me in the chat, chemical or physical change, our first pumpkin experiment. But question from Carrington, does it still melt as fast as regular ice? And the answer to that is no, because dry ice actually doesn't melt at all. It never melts. That's why we call it dry ice. Um, it does turn into a gas, but it doesn't melt. Melting is the name of a phase change when a solid like water ice turns into a liquid, like liquid water. But this dry ice is special. It goes through that phase change that we call sublimation, where it turns from a solid to a gas while it skips that liquid phase altogether. And so um, it changes much more quickly because room temperature is much warmer than the freezing point of this or the desublimation point of our dry ice. Um, and so as soon as it gets any warmer than negative 109, this stuff starts to sublimate or turn into a gas. Now, one more experiment with this pumpkin volunteer. Let me go ahead and grab a glove, even though that beaker is really, really warm because of that hot water. Um, we'll go ahead and set that off to the side where we can still see it. It looks really, really cool. But I have a different beaker. And instead of water, this beaker, I'm gonna put a tiny bit of warm water in there, but I've also added some dish soap. You might see my dish soap's been hiding here behind the table. Um, but as this dry ice sublimates, and I'm starting to see some answers tuning in in the chat, this is an example of a physical change. Even though our dry ice looks really different, it's still just carbon dioxide. We've just changed it from being carbon dioxide in the solid form, where those molecules are very tightly packed into those little cubes, to carbon dioxide in its gaseous form. Um, so there, the actual sublimation, the actual um, phase change, that's an example of a physical change where it's still carbon dioxide at the beginning, still carbon dioxide at the end. Um, but let's see what happens as we produce that carbon dioxide gas, this time inside a little bit of soap. Let's see how, might take us a moment here. You can see it's sublimating. We see those bubbles starting to form. Oh, I hope this one was dish soap and not just colorful water. Oh yeah, we're starting to get some bubbles starting to form there, but we can see just how much gas is formed. I put in a handful of dry ice, but in its uh, gaseous form, once those bubbles form, they start to take up much more space, about 700 times more space as a gas than it did as a solid. We say that's the expansion ratio. As those molecules expand, um, even though they're not changing, they do look very different at the end. All right, let's move on to our second pumpkin here. Um, our second pumpkin is right up here on the top of our table. Um, and for this one, we're gonna do one of my favorite all time classic Science Center experiments. Um, we are going to do an elephant toothpaste reaction. Um, now I've preloaded a chemical here inside our pumpkin. Um, what I've put inside is some hydrogen peroxide. And 
We all probably have hydrogen peroxide at home, um, but if you've seen this reaction before, you know that this is not the same stuff that you have in your medicine cabinet. The hydrogen peroxide that we use for first aid is about two or maybe 3% hydrogen peroxide. The stuff that I've pre-poured into this beaker, this stuff is about 35%. You can see it just inside the beaker, inside our pumpkin's mouth here. Um, but that stuff is really, really strong. And if you think about what um, hydrogen peroxide feels like when you put it on your cuts and scrapes, it stings a little bit. And so this stuff is much stronger, so strong that I loaded it in there before our program so that I don't need to touch it here on camera. Um, but what we're going to do is we're gonna add a couple more ingredients. First thing we're gonna add is some food coloring because science, just like our holidays, everything is more fun when it's super, super colorful. So we'll add a little bit of blue, a little bit of red, which gives us um, some purple down inside. Now adding that didn't quite make our elephant toothpaste reaction go off like we're expecting, right? So this wasn't exactly the thing that we needed in order to turn this hydrogen peroxide into that big foamy pile of bubbles that we, um, that we saw before or that we were pretty used to. Um, we might also try adding a little bit of dish soap. Now we saw dish soap in our first pumpkin. What this is designed to do is to catch all of those soap bubbles that we're about to create once we add our last ingredient. Um, so, so far, no reaction, right? Nothing happening just quite yet. Um, but what we need in order to kick this off is something called a catalyst. A catalyst is something that's going to speed up the reaction and make it go much, much faster because this hydrogen peroxide right now is actually very slowly breaking down. Um, but it's going very slow, so slow that we'd have to stand here until about Easter instead of Halloween if we wanted this to break all the way down like we're expecting it to. Um, so in order to speed it up, we've got one last ingredient to add, just a little bit of salt. Now this doesn't really look like salt. This is a chemical called um, potassium iodide, which is a salt, um, but it's not the salt we put on our food. That is sodium chloride. This is potassium iodide, and it's just going to make our reaction go much more quickly. All right, here we go with our next pumpkin reaction in three, two, one. Ooh, look at that. Big mess as always here on Echo Live. A little bit of work for me to clean up later, um, but our elephant toothpaste gave us exactly the reaction we were looking for. Um, I can feel a great deal of heat starting to come off this reaction. Um, it's really, really warm. What happened is we broke down our hydrogen peroxide. We ripped it apart and we created a big pile of oxygen bubbles. So tell me what you think based on what I just described to you is elephant toothpaste, our second pumpkin reaction, is that a chemical or a physical change? Remember that physical means it stays the same throughout, although it might look a little different, but chemical means that we've broken and reformed chemical bonds. So elephant toothpaste is an example of what? Is it a chemical change or a physical change? And someone asked a question in the chat about dry ice. Um, it is safe to keep dry ice at home. It's very, very cold. So definitely never touch it with your bare hands, um, but you don't necessarily have to have cryogenic gloves like I did. Um, just your winter gloves, um, a nice thick pair, not those little fleece pairs, or a pair of gardening gloves or work gloves are also great. You can touch dry ice with those and you can actually buy it at a lot of local grocery stores. It's usually near the customer service desk. Um, you can buy it to take camping with you. It keeps your food for a lot longer than regular ice would because it's much, much colder. Um, so if you need to store it, keep it in a cooler. Um, I have a styrofoam cooler that I use temporarily, um, but we have a plastic insulated cooler that it keeps in for about four to five days in these little nuggets. Um, so if you're going to store it at home, store it safely, um, store it where people aren't going to grab into it thinking it's regular ice, but definitely if you have dry ice near you, it's really fun. Try some of these, try this experiment at home. Um, there is an, an at home safe version of elephant toothpaste that you can try as well. You can find that activity guide on the Michigan Science Center's website. Um, if you visit our website slash at home science, there is a safe version of elephant toothpaste that you can do using that two to 3% hydrogen peroxide that you can get at the drugstore. All right, no guess is coming in quite yet, but this one was a chemical reaction, right? And we know that because we said we turned it from being hydrogen peroxide 
into oxygen bubbles. So different molecules at the start and stop, we've made and re we've broken apart and reformed chemical bonds, which means that this was a chemical change where our first one was a physical change. All right, let's move all the way down here to the end. And you might have noticed that I've got my handy dandy piece of safety equipment here on the table. Um, this is here because this reaction, um, this one, we are going to use a little bit of combustion. We are gonna combine the three parts of the fire triangle, fuel, heat, and oxygen in order for this pumpkin volunteer to meet its fate. All right, let's go ahead. I'm gonna set my lid off to the side. Um, I've done a tiny amount of pre-work for this. I've taken just a small amount of water. Ooh, just a little bit of water, just a little shiny apparently. My green screen's messing with it. Um, but we've got a little bit of water down here inside our pumpkin, which probably sounds kind of strange, right? Because normally we think of water as preventative to fire, right? Um, water is a great insulator, meaning it doesn't really let things get very hot. Water can also be used to put out fires. Um, we think of that with fire trucks or fire hydrants. Um, but in this case, we need that water in order to generate the fuel for our reaction. We're gonna add something next called calcium carbide. Um, and calcium carbide, if you were to look it up, look at it up close, let me see, once I open my container here, I'll give you an up close view. Using my handy dandy tool called a scoopula, uh, my favorite science equipment by far, just because it has a fun name. Um, but this, here's our pumpkin. Um, this stuff inside this container just looks like some gray rocks. And if you were standing here in the studio right now with me, you would say, poo you, that stuff stinks. Um, and in fact, it does. It smells really, really bad. But when we dissolve this calcium carbide, this smelly rock inside the water, that's going to generate the fuel that we're looking for. Don't worry, just setting my extinguisher off to the side so I have a little bit more space to work with. Um, but what we're going to do, go ahead, add in our heat source, which is just a small, spark lighter. Um, next, we're going to take a scoop of our calcium carbide, dump it in the water, and right now we have a fuel beginning to generate inside called acetylene gas. That stuff is highly, highly flammable, um, so we're going to let that fuel generate, and on the count of three, we are going to ignite, and this almost never works at the time we want, so we'll do a three, two, one, three, two, one, three, two, one as many times as we have to just to get the reaction we're looking for. So let's go ahead and try this in three, two, one. Oh boy. Let in a little bit more oxygen through the top. Three, two, one. And would you look at that? Like we said, when we least expect it, uh, we have our carbide cannon reaction, which is a much faster way to get those little pieces out of our pumpkin than if I were to reach inside and kind of pry them out. Don't have to do any of that gross work, um, but this is our combustion way of carving this pumpkin. Now, tell me what you think, though, because let's bring it back to that question that we're asking every time. Was our carbide cannon, this reaction where we used combustion to carve our pumpkin, was that a chemical or a physical change? Think about all the things we added inside and think about the reaction that we were left with. Did our ingredients stay the same? We definitely talked about something interesting happening. Um, we had water and calcium carbide, but we certainly generated something new, right? We added in the calcium carbide and we created acetylene gas. Um, then we added in our heat and we burnt away all that acetylene gas. So this was an example of a chemical reaction. The ingredients that we put in are entirely different than the ingredients that we got out. Not only does fire require three things, it requires fuel, heat, and oxygen. It also produces three things. Those three things are heat, light, and sometimes smoke, right? So common between them is it takes heat and produces heat. But the other two things are new, things we didn't start with. And so combustion is a fantastic example of a chemical change and a pretty exciting one at that. Now, reminder, as always, that these reactions are extremely dangerous. Gave you a little bit of advice on how you can try these two pumpkin reactions at home. Definitely dry ice is something safe to work with if you have some adult supervision. Elephant toothpaste can be done safely using that regular strength um, peroxide but fire 
is never okay to play with at home, not even if you have adult supervision, because we are highly trained here at the Michigan Science Center to do these activities safely. Would never want anyone at home to try this and get hurt um, or try this and damage anything in your, in your home, okay? So never combustion and never this last one that we're about to try as well. Now, this last one um, is also something very, very cold, but this substance that we're going to use for our final pumpkin of the day is something that's even colder than dry ice, even colder than negative 109. We are going to use liquid nitrogen in our very last pumpkin. Liquid nitrogen, if you remember, has a temperature of about negative 321 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about three times as cold as the dry ice that we put into our first pumpkin. Now, I'm keeping my hearing protection close by because for this, we're going to recreate a smaller, more pumpkin-sized version of our ball plosion that we did on our 100th episode celebration of Echo Live. Um, now, unfortunately, the ball pit balls that we threw into our trash can are a little bit too large to toss into our pumpkin. Um, and so instead, I thought it'd be fun to use another really popular Halloween snack, which is a little bit of pre-popped popcorn. Um, for this, of course, we'll need those cryogenic gloves back because this stuff is super, super duper cold. Um, but we are going to be taking our liquid nitrogen and pouring it down inside this empty water bottle. Once we do that, this liquid nitrogen is going to expand at about the same ratio as our dry ice. But instead of uh, trapping this liquid nitrogen gas safely inside some bubbles, um, we're gonna trap it inside this closed container. Um, so basically we are creating an explosion, but remember, never try any of these experiments at home because explosions can be highly dangerous and I would never want anyone to get injured. But I've got all my safety equipment on, I've got my hearing protection because it's going to be quite loud. I've got my eye protection to keep my eyes safe, just in case we see a little bit of shrapnel. I've got my safety gloves, I've got my lab coat, I've got everything I need nearby. And of course, I've got the safety of being here at the Michigan Science Center behind me as well. So let's see, we've got gloves. Go ahead and I'm gonna pour my liquid nitrogen just down through this funnel into our water bottle. Not a lot, just enough to cover the bottom. Um, and that stuff is actually starting to rapidly boil. Um, you can see it inside the container. Um, these next two steps are gonna have to go very, very quickly. So I'm only taking off the glove that's not touching the nitrogen. I'm gonna go ahead, quickly seal the lid, toss it in the pumpkin, try to dump in my popcorn as quickly as possible and do that all in succession. Here we go in three, two, one. Here's some crackling. If you were here for episode 50, I way timed this very bad. So let's go ahead. We'll just give it a moment to boil. Oops. I can hear crackling, which means I think our reaction is working. If it wasn't, I think we'd see a bit more fog as that dry ice, or not dry ice, as that liquid nitrogen starts to seep out of our bottle. Um, of course, I always come prepared. <laughs> And would you look at that? My studio is even bigger mess than it normally is at the end of these shows. Um, but that is our final pumpkin carving reaction of the day. If you look at my water bottle here, it is completely shredded. There's popcorn literally everywhere the eye can see. Um, I've got a whole lot of cleanup to do, but of course I wanna say thank you so much to everyone who joined us for another episode of Echo Live. If you have any questions before we head out today, definitely feel free to type them in the chat. I'd love to answer a few before we go. As always, huge thank you to Ford and to Denso for being the sponsors of Echo Live. It is because of them that we are able to continue bringing you exciting episodes like this one through the end of the year and even beyond. Um, so thank you to Ford and Denso for your sponsorship and your support. You can continue tuning in for the rest of this year, Wednesdays at 2.30 p.m. Eastern. Um, if you're watching this after the fact, you can still reach out to us on our website here on Facebook, on YouTube. Um, and if you're looking for some of those at-home safe experiments that you can try at home, definitely check out our website down here at the bottom, mi-sci.org slash at-home science. Um, you can find that elephant toothpaste recipe. You can find some other really fun chemistry experiments that are safe to try at home. 
Um, but as always, don't try any of these dangerous experiments. Leave that to us here at the Science Center. If you have any requests for other things you'd like us to try that you don't feel are safe to try at home, let us know. We'll be happy to try them here. So thank you everyone so much for tuning in. I hope I'll see you back here next time for another episode of Echo Live. Have a great rest of your